Hi guys and girls, welcome back to Watch The Time. So today is another Addy's Dive. It does feel like Addy's Dive season in my house at the moment. Uh, this is the Sumo. Um, it's the, is it the Well Shark? I think they're calling it. My friend Adrian, over a summer of time, let me have a look at this watch. I appreciate you, mate. Thank you very much. Um, the, the thing that's, that, that kind of surprised me about this watch, and he did post a few pictures on Instagram, was the dial. Um, you'll see that now. Uh, it's it's quite crazy that I, I, on AliExpress, you get a lot of watches that represent outstanding value for money. Not many of them have got the sort of details on the dial that this one has. Um, it's, it's not on Seiko level, I don't think, but 10 out of 10 for effort. And the fact that they've actually tried doing something a little bit different, I think it's cool, man. Um, yeah, it was the, well, definitely one that surprised me. And thankfully, my, my mate sent it over. So thank you, Agent. I really do appreciate that. Um, but guys, as I say, the Addis Dive are coming thick and fast. Please let me know if there's any other brand that you'd like me to get in for the channel. And without further ado, let's get the camera turned around and get on with it. Hi, guys and girls. So this is the watch. As I say, excuse my voice. Uh, it's definitely on its way out. Um, enjoying the Formula One a bit too much. Uh, so yeah, this is the Addis Dive. Uh, it's a sumo homage. Uh, just go. For, let me just put this to the side. This is the watch we're going to be looking at. Uh, it's got all the packaging inside. Comes with an instruction manual. Um, tang tang tool to help adjust the bracelet. This is the press clasp that it came on. Um, Adrian's been good enough to change it. I would I would have probably done exactly the same thing if I was keeping it around for any length of time. Uh, warranty card uh, unsigned, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. But it tends to be the case of steel dive and Addy's dive. And two links I've had to remove for it to fit my wrist. Uh, as I've said before, my wrist is just above a seven inch wrist. So that would give you some idea of the sort of wrist sizes it will sort of cover. But let me put that to the side now quickly so we can focus on the watch itself. As you can see, the dial on this is, is a winner, really. I think that's one of the biggest things about this watch is the dial. The model number is AD. 2102 inside it's running an automatic Seiko movement uh, you ain't better see anything because it's not uh, exhibition case back but let you have a look at the case back it's just giving you some information and it's also telling you on there what movements there which is the NH35 rugged reliable movement um, 24 joules a date variant of the NH series of movements the case material everything apart from the bezel insert and the crystal is all stainless steel so that's the bezel crown case back solid end links bracelet and clasp obviously as i say he's he's upgraded it to a mill clasp but the clasp it comes on is also stainless steel the case thickness of this watch is 13.9 millimeters the lug width i'll go from the nine to the three to exclude the crown is 44.6 and when you include the crown that does become 48.8 millimeters the lug width is 20 millimeters and the lug to lug tip to tip is 52 millimeters that does become 55.9 millimeters given the fact that they are quite protruding cell uh, male enter male center links of the end links so just bear that in mind guys uh, as i showed you before the case back is deep etched um, i'll let you have a look at it one more time um, you can see they've definitely taken some design cues and ideas and a bit of plagiarism from steel dive quite quite similar logos the bezel is a ceramic bezel and it's 120 click unidirectional i'll let you listen go around a couple of times a couple of little high points uh quite a clicky bezel not too bad though no bounce no back play um the loom on it's okay you'll see that shortly when we look at the dial in a bit more detail and give it a quick wipe uh, the crown is situated sort of at the three-ish position four and it is signed as you'll be able to see with the Addis Dive logo on there. The strap material is it's stainless steel as I've already said and it is basically brushed. You've got middle facets that are polished and it is longitudinal brushing polished on the sides and push pins uh, to enable you to change that out. Um, the clasp it came on was also sterile and pressed the one he's upgraded to is sterile and milled or two parts of it milled the outer shell is still pressed the crystal covering that dial is a sapphire crystal and it's got lots of blue ar coating on there which is normally what you get with addy's dive and steel dive watches 
but I don't mind me a bit of AR coating, so it's all good. The water resistance, you'll be able to see down at the six, it's 200 meters, so that would give you 20 atmospheres of water resistance. And the weight will appear in the top right, it's in around 189 grams, give or take. But let's have a look at the dial now, guys, because this is the, the winner of this, with this watch. It's got a rehaut uh, chapter ring with a minute track going around the outer edge. Inside that, you've got applied elements everywhere aside from the three o'clock, so you can make way for a date window. And it's got a border on there. Uh, not, not, not applied, just printed on border. Below the indices at the 12. Actually, let me move it so you can have a better look at the dial. I'll move it to the sort of positions I normally do. We go to 20 past eight because uh, that should allow you to see everything on the dial quite nicely. So you've got on the, all, all the elements apart from the indices are they're all uh, printed. So it looks like it's all been printed. You've got quite a nice textured dial, sort of gives you sort of like rippled effect for the waves, and you can see the whale shark sort of swimming just below the surface. Addy's die printed on just below the 12, just above the indices at the six. You've got deep sea hunter automatic 200 meters just denoting the fact it does have 200 meters it's not going to be certified to any degree but given the fact the crown and the case back are all screwed down i would be happy taking this swimming uh, the loom on it is actually pretty good i'll bring that up now and what you'll be able to see is uh, the loom at the, the, the 12 on the bezel uh, is a bit inconsistent which is a bit unfortunate but for the price given what else you're getting it's it's it's, it's probably not it's not a deal breaker really given the fact it's a 110 pound watch $150 and you're getting so much other specs and the dial and everything else for the, for the price. As I said, Seiko NH35 movement, um, you take it out to the second position, it will hack, you put it back in, it will start back up again to the first position, you can scroll through the dates and if you put it back in, as I say, you can hand wind it. So if you've taken it out of the box for the first time in a while, you should be able to add some juice to it and then you can screw the crown back up. Uh, very tactile, easy to deal with actually, no problems with a crown. The fact it's signed also just adds that little bit of a little bit of elegance and class because I don't like sterile um, crowns. If I'm being honest, it's nice to see them go through the hassle of putting a bit of etching on there. So well done, Addy's dive. But um, yeah, that's the dial, guys. As I say, you'll see the blue transition into sort of darker blue, and also you see the whale shark swimming under the surface. It's a massive surprise that you can get this at this sort of price. I wouldn't say it's on Seiko Seiko level. But it's a lot a lot cheaper than that, and it's just a big surprise to me to be honest. I've not seen an awful lot of this sort of stuff coming out of AliExpress, so yeah, very well done. But yeah, that's the dial, guys. Let me pop on the wrist quickly, give you an idea what it looks like on my wrist. As I've said before, my wrist is just above a seven inch wrist. I did have to take off two links for it to fit me, and it's on the uh, the lowest, excuse me, the highest level of micro adjustment. There's still two to go the other way, so you can make it a bit tighter. And yeah, that's what it looks like on my wrist. Uh, very snug. Um, the fact that it's quite big uh, is not going to be for everyone. I can see that. But you can see what it looks like on my wrist. And my wrist is just like an average size wrist. So yeah, hopefully that make, helps you to make a decision. My friend Adrian did feature this on his channel. And I would like you to go over and check it out. Uh, and also what you'll see from the perspective is that he's got a slightly bigger wrist than me. And you'll see what it looks like on his wrist. So that might also... Be helpful for you guys to make a decision as to whether it's something you're interested in but that would then take me on to what i think is pants and pucker about the watch i always start with pants i like to go to high with pucker so what i think is pants is the bezel loom as i say just at the 12 o'clock position predominantly uh <clears throat> it's not as good on the bezel as it is on the on the dial but yeah that there it's, it doesn't look very good very inconsistent in terms of the application uh the link size I said this on the Proxima I had, it's very similar bracelet. Um, I think the links are just too big. It doesn't, it, and when you wear it, because they're so big, it doesn't conform to the wrist as nicely. The tolerances are done well, but I would, I would like to see a slightly um, smaller links put on in terms of how long they are. And the clasp again. So with Addy's Dive and Steel Dive, they've very much settled on these press clasps and I would, I'd really like them to reconsider, even if they passed on to the value, uh, the cost to the consumer, <clears throat> adding five, ten pound onto the cost. I think most people would take that because the mill class just adds a little bit of a um, more premium feel to the watch. But yeah, they're the three things I've seen that I think are pants. I'd go with the bezel loom at the twelve. I'd go with the link size and the clasp in terms of what I think is pants. What I think is pucker. I'd go with the sapphire crystal 
I do love a bit of sapphire crystal. It looks domed because it's distorting as you tilt it. The AR coating on it, um, I know some people don't like too much AR coating, but I really like it. And even when you film it, you don't get too much glare, which is fantastic. So that's cool. The dial, as I've said, the dial on this watch is by far going to be the star of the show because you look at that dial and that is stunning. Um, yeah, the dial is beautiful. The movement, the fact that you've got a Seiko NH35 movement inside this watch, um, yeah, again, it's becoming more sought after. And as I said at the start, it's very rugged and reliable. So yeah, the cool movement. I like the drilled lugs. That makes it easier for, for strap changes. Um, yeah, they, they make it easier. And that will take me on to the end link fit. This is so snug in there, guys. They've done really well with the tolerances there. It doesn't move at all. So yeah, in terms of drilled lugs, that'll make it a lot easier to change out the straps if you wish. Uh, the case back, I've said this on a few watches of theirs now. I do like the fact they've gone for deep etching on the back. Um, and I don't even mind the fact they put stat stats on there, just so you can see what 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 the watch it basically consists of. And finally, the price. So one hundred and ten pound ish, hundred and fifty dollars. You can pick this up generally, and I think it's a whole lot of watch for the price. To be perfectly honest, I think you're getting a lot of watch. So just to summarize very quickly, excuse my voice. I'd go with the sapphire crystal, the AR coating, the dial, the movement, the drilled lugs, the end links fitment. The case back and the price are what I think is pucker. And would I recommend this watch? Uh, I would say I would, to be honest, guys. I, I definitely would say, yeah. Um, getting it for that sort of price uh, with all the specs you're getting, um, I think, yeah, I think it's definitely worth considering. Um, I will leave a, a link taking you to the mill clasp as well in case you buy it and you want to upgrade that. So feel free to check that out. Um, I, I, it looks as though it goes from 20 down to 18, so it'd be a 20 mil clasp you'd need. Uh, but I'll leave the details for that in the description. But guys, let me know what you think about this watch. And maybe any other watches you may want to see on the channel. And as always say, don't forget to like, subscribe. And always watch your time. Take care guys, all the very best. <laughs>